Welcome to our very first knowledge module. I'm assuming if you're here that you already know how to read Greek. If not, you can just check out our reading Greek course. It's housed under the same tab as our knowledge modules. It'll probably take a day or two to work through and then you can come back and start with us. What we're going to do today is focus on vocabulary. We're going to learn 26 of the most basic words and phrases that you will want when you're speaking Greek. You can imagine that you're walking down the street in Greece and you're not going to have any extended conversations, but you might bump into a few people. These words, these phrases that we're going to learn today are exactly what you're going to want to know. Vocabulary is the building block of a language. Without any words, we can't make any sentences. We can't express anything. So we're focused on learning about 30 words per week together. You'll see that quickly our vocabulary will grow and we'll be speaking before we know it. Let's go now. Imagine that you're walking down the street in Greece. You're walking down the street and someone, for some reason, catches your eye. Maybe they think you're uh, their friend. They lift up their hand, they wave, and they say, Ya su. Ya su. You don't know what to say back, so what do you do? Ya su. You say the same thing. Ya su. Ya su means what? Ya su means hello. Ya su. Now, imagine that you're walking with a friend. Same street, same person sees you, and they lift up their hand, and this time they say, Ya sas. Ya sas. Ya su is how you say hello to one person. Ya sas is how you say hello to two people or three people or four people. Now, there's one more thing about yasas. Let's say another day you're walking down the street. Except this time you're feeling like you need to be fancy, you need to be formal, so you've dressed nicely. You put, you put on a suit, you put on a dress, whatever it is, you're walking down the street, maybe you're carrying something that makes you look official. Someone stops you and they say Ya sas. Ya sas doesn't just go with groups. It also is the formal way even of addressing one person. So if you're in a context where you're meeting someone for the first time, maybe they're older than you, maybe simply uh, their position or you're trying to be polite, instead of saying ya su, even though it's one person, you may say ya sas. So we've learned so far how to say hello. Yasu, yasas. Here, I want to make a point. We are learning through video. Unfortunately, we're not in the same room together. But you're going to have to practice speaking. If you work through all these courses and don't actually use, start using the words, you're never really going to, you're never going to get to the point you want. You have to actually be able to make conversation. So I'm asking you something. I'm a bit crazy right now. I'm talking to the camera. I want you to be a bit crazy when you're following these lessons and talk to the computer screen or the phone screen. I want you to actually uh, repeat what I'm saying throughout these lessons. So I will ask you questions directly and I will ask you to repeat things. As we learn new words, we're always going to repeat them together a number of times because it's important to get the pronunciation down. So let's repeat the word for hello for one person in a non-formal way. That word is yasu. 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 And the formal or the plural way of hello is yasas. Yasas. Yasas, 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 hello. Now, let's imagine that someone else stops us on the street. By the way, it's morning. We just got a coffee 
and we're walking down the street. Someone else catches our eye. They don't say Yasu. Instead, they say Kalimera. 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 You don't know what to say, and so you say what? Kalimera. Kalimera means good. What time of the day is it? Good morning. Kalimera. Good morning. Kalimera. Let's say it together. Kalimera. 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 Good morning. Now, you're out and about, but it's a bit later. It's maybe the late afternoon, maybe the early evening, and someone catches your eye again on the street and says, Kali spera. Kali spera. Kali spera. Kali spera means good evening. Though, depending on where you are in Greece, you might hear Kalispera any time after noon. After noon. For the most part, though, it's used in the late afternoon and in the evening. Kalimera, mera, in the morning. Kalispera, in the evening. Finally, you're walking home. It's been a long day, and you're with a friend, and... You're saying goodbye, and they want to say to you, have a good night. They are going to say, Kali nichta. Kali nichta. Let's say it together. Kali nichta. Kali nichta. Kali nichta. Kali nichta. Kali nichta. Good night. Now, someone stops you on the street. And for this dialogue, we're going to use a bit of English. In the beginning phases of learning a language, we are going to mix Greek with English. That will go away. But this mixing of Greek with English is totally fine and even proven effective in the beginning stages of learning a language. So, imagine that a Greek person stops you on the street. They say, Yasu, it's morning, Kalimera. And then they want to ask you their name. So they say, what's your name? To say, my name is, you say, Me Lenne. Me Lenne. So, I would say, Me Lenne Michael. Let's just use my English version. Me Lenne Michael. How would you say it? Me Lenne and your name. What's your name? asks this Greek person. You say Me Lenne and your name. Me Lenne. That phrase, melene, means literally, lene, they call me. Me lene, they call me. That's how Greeks say, my name is. If you wanted to say, they call us, say you were with your friend, and you both for some reason had the same name, instead of saying, me lene, my name is, or they call me, you would say, mas, mas means us, mas lene. Mas lenne, they call us. So, my name is, or they call me, me lenne. Our name is, or they call us, mas lenne. Me, mi, mas, us. Now, let's say you are talking to your friend. And your friend, for some reason, they got a dizzy by all the beautiful uh, sights and sounds of Greece. They forgot their name. You have to tell them their name. Instead of saying me lene, you're going to say se 
lenne. They call se, you. Se means you. Se lenne. They call you or your name is. Let's say your friend's name is Thomas. Se lenne Thomas. Now, let's imagine that Thomas is not your friend, but rather uh, some famous person, maybe a politician, and you want to show respect. You won't say to Thomas, se lenne. You're going to say, sas lenne. Sas lenne means they call you in the plural or in the formal. So if there was a group, it would be sas lenne. They call all of you Thomas. There's a group of Thomases. Or sas lenne if Thomas is for some reason someone you're trying to show special respect to. Okay? Me lenne, they call me. Mas lenne, they call us. Se lenne, they call you. And sas lenne, they call all of you or you formal. You continue walking down the street and you see a store that you want to go into. Someone's in front of you and they hold the door open. They hold the door open for you and so you say, well, I'll hold the door open for the next person. You do. You hold the door open for the next person and that person looks at you and says, Evcharisto. Evcharisto. What does that mean? You open the door for them. What are they going to say? Evcharisto means thank you. Thank you. So let's say it together. This is a bit tricky. F ha ri sto. 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 Now, they just thank you for holding open the door. You want to practice your Greek. You want to say, you're welcome. Your welcome is para kalo. Para kalo. Para kalo. Para kalo. Para kalo. Now, para kalo has another meaning. Para kalo can also mean please. So let's say, again, you're at the door and you want someone, you're holding it, let's say, uh, there's an older lady, she's got a bunch of bags, and you want to hold the door and you're asking her, please pass, please go ahead. You would say, para kalo, para kalo, go ahead. Or you might order a hamburger. Can I have a hamburger? Para kalo, please. Para kalo is please, and you're welcome, evkaristo is Thank you. Now, you've gotten into the store, and you're trying to squeeze past people. It's a packed store, and you want to squeeze past. You want to say, Signomi. Signomi means, excuse me. Signomi. 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 Let's say it together. Signomi. Signomi, signomi, signomi. Maybe you're in class. Signomi. Actually, in Greece, they don't raise a hand. They raise, they point their finger. So imagine you're in a class. You would say signomi to the teacher. Signomi to get their attention. Signomi, excuse me. And then let's move on now. Say that. You're in the store, you paid, and you want to just say goodbye to the cashier. You would say to them, adio, adio, adio is a nice, easy way to say goodbye. You could also say yasu or yasas. Yasu and yasas is hello, we said. It's also goodbye. Adio is just goodbye. If you know Spanish, adios, adio. Goodbye. Now, imagine that someone walks up to you and says, Ti canis. Ti canis means, how are you? We're actually not learning that here. You want to say, I'm good. I'm well. You will say, Kala. 
Kala. Kala means well. How are you? Kala. Evharisto. Well, thank you. Kala. Evharisto. If you wanted to say not just well, thank you, but rather I am well, thank you, you would say Ime Kala. Evharisto. Ime Kala. Evharisto. Ime means I am. You can also use it. If you forget how to say Melene, they call me. Melene, Michael, they call me Michael. I could even just say Ime, Michael. I am Michael. And what if I wanted to say you are Thomas? I wouldn't say Ime, Thomas. That's I am Thomas. I would say I se. I se. You are Thomas. Ise means you are. Let's say I am and you are. Ime, Ise. Ime, Ise. Ime, Michael. Ise, your name. What do you say? Ime, your name. Ime, I am, Ise. You are. What if we wanted to say he or she or it is? It's all the same word. You would say i ne. Now with a ni. I ne. Now I'm saying this is Thomas. He is Thomas. I would say i ne. Thomas. He is Thomas. I could grab my phone and say i ne. Phone. We'll learn the word later. I could grab some scissors and say. Ine, scissors. Ine, it is. Now, if we say pu ine, we are asking where something is. If I say pu ine i toaleta, I'm asking where is the bathroom. So the word pu means what? It means where. What if I wanted to say where? Are you? I wouldn't say pu ine, where is it? I wouldn't say pu ime, where am I? I would say pu ise. Pu ise. Where are you? Imagine that you're in Greece. We have a map. You're in Greece. You would say elada. Elada. Elada means Greece. E elada, you'll notice as we learn words that some words, specifically nouns, have a little thing in front of them. Either it will be an E or an O or a TO. That little word is called a definite article. We're going to learn about it later. But when you learn your vocab word, you want to, you want to learn that little definite article along with the word. You want to know that the word is i elada and not to elada or o elada. That's kind of a side point. Greece is i elada. Elada. Let's say that together. It's a good word for people who are learning Greek. Elada. 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 Elada, elada, Greece, elada. Now, let's imagine we're back in that store. You held the door. You said adio, goodbye to the cashier. They're very impressed by you, and they want to ask, where did you learn Greek? Greek, the language, is ta elinika. Ta elinika. In Elada, they speak what? Ta elinika. They speak Greek. In England, or in America, or in Canada, or in many places, they speak English. English is Anglica. Ta Anglica. We have Greek, ta elinika, and we have English, 
Anglica. Anglica. We have Elada, where they speak Elinica. And we have other countries, English-speaking countries, where they speak Anglica. Anglica. If you want to say the full sentence, I speak Greek, you will say Milau Elinica. Milau means what? I speak. Milau, I speak Greek. Elinica, I speak Greek. Now, let's say I speak Greek. I say Milau Elinica, but I want to say to Thomas that he speaks English. I'll turn to him and I'll say, You speak. Instead of Milau, I'm going to say Milas. Milas, you speak. Not Elinica, but English, Anglica. Milas, Anglica. I, Milau, Elinica. I speak Greek. Thomas, you speak English. Thomas, Milas, Anglica. Now, let's imagine you're back on the street. Someone heard you say Milau Elinica. And so they came up to you and they said, Mipos porite na me voithisete thelo na pasto aerodromio de xero me pio leoforio. Did you understand? If you did, go to the next lesson. If you didn't, <laughs> you're going to say, Then catalaveno. Then catalaveno. Then no. Then catalaveno means I don't understand. <laughs> then catalaveno. What if I wanted to say I understand English? I could say catalaveno ta anglica. I understand English. What if I wanted to say I don't understand Greek? I would say what's the not part of understand? Then, that means not, I don't. Then, katalaveno, Greek. Ta, elinica. Then, katalaveno, ta, elinica. I don't understand Greek. Next, you and Thomas decide to go home. Uh, and on the way, you meet someone else. They introduce themselves. They say, hi, my name is Eleni. And you want to say, it's nice to meet you. You will say to Eleni, Hero poli. Hero poli means it's nice to meet you. Let's say it together. Hero poli. Ime Michael. Hero poli. I'm Michael. It's nice to meet you. Hero poli. Hero poli. Hero poli, hero poli, hero poli. It's nice to meet you. Let's say now that we talked for a while with Eleni. We told her hero poli, it's nice to meet you. But we had a small conversation and now we want to leave. Uh, we can say adio, goodbye. But we might also want to say again, it was nice to have met you. To say that instead of Hero poli, we say harika poli. Harika poli, adio. It was nice to have met you. This is what you say at the end of the conversation. Harika poli. It was nice to have met you. Adio, yasu, eleni. Finally, one more word. You're going back down into the metro. You're in Athens. And you're going to go home. Uh, and again, on the way in, someone holds the door for you. You remember how to say thank you. So you say, F charisto, thank you. And you're expecting them to say, Para kalo, you're welcome. But they don't. Instead, they say, Tipota. T 
tipota. Tipota means literally, it means nothing. It, it means if someone says, what did you do today? And you said, tipota, you said, I didn't do anything. I did nothing. Tipota. But it is also used to mean, you're welcome. Almost like in English, we say, don't mention it. Tipota. It's not a big deal that I held the door for you. Tipota. Let's turn now to our words and just do a quick review going from Greek into English. Here we have yasu or yasas. What does that mean? It means hello. Then we have kalimera. Kalimera means good morning. Kalimera. Kalimera. Good morning. Then we have kalispera. Kalispera means good evening. And finally, we have kalinichta. Kalinichta means good night. Then we have me Lene. Melene means they call me. Mas Lene means they call us. We are called, our name is. We have Selene. They call you or your name is. And then Sas Lene. They call you or your name is for the plural or formal. Then we have F. Charisto. F. Charisto means thank you. And we have para kalo. Para kalo means you're welcome. We have the word signomi that you might say if you bump into something or someone, probably not something. Signomi, you will say, excuse me. Signomi means excuse me. Adio. Goodbye. Kala means well. I'm doing well. Kala. Ime, I am. Kala, I am well. Ime means I am. Ise, you are. Ine, he, she, or it is. Pu ine, blank. Where is blank? Puine. Where is the Acropolis? Puine. Acropolis. Y helada. Y helada. Puine. Y helada. Where is Greece? It's on a map here. Ta elinica. Greek. Ta anglica. English. Milao elinica. I speak Greek. Milas Anglica. You speak English. Then Catalaveno. Then Catalaveno. I don't understand. Hero Poli. We met Eleni. When we met her, we said Hero Poli. It's nice to meet you. And then when we left, after our conversation with Eleni, we said, Harika, it's nice to have met you. And uh, finally, the word tipota, which means nothing, or don't mention it. You're welcome. No big deal. Tipota. I hope that was no big deal. Uh, that was the end of our lesson. Those are our first words in Greek that we're going to learn and we're going to make our own. Right now, I just want to talk about the rest of the lesson. This lesson, aside from the video that you can watch as many times as you'd like, also has a handout that you can find in the lesson below that will have basically this vocab list. It has a quiz that you can take at any point. I take it fairly soon after the video. It's designed as a sort of immediate refresher to reinforce what we just learned. 
And then this lesson also has a Quizlet set. What's Quizlet? Quizlet is a flashcard software and app that we're going to use in our course for Vocab. I think the flashcards are very good and they don't just use traditional flashcards. They have other games and kind of learning modes. So in, in a link below, you'll be able to click flashcards. You'll go to Quizlet, you make a new account. And when you have account, an account, it's free. They want an email. When you have that account, you're able to then enter our class. Uh, it'll be right there. And then you're gonna have access to not only the cards for this class, but as you unlock other lessons, you'll see more and more sets of flashcards up there. So what do you need to do at this point? At this point, I want you to learn the vocab as active vocab. This is very important. Flashcards, things like watching this video, for the most part, teach us passive vocab. It teaches us to recognize a word and know what it means, just like we just did at the end. You saw the word in Greek, and then you were trying to remember what it means in English. That's somewhat passive. All of the vocab that we're gonna learn, especially in the early stages, we want it to be active. We want these words to be words that we can pull out of our brain when we wanna say something. When we wanna say thank you, we don't wanna just recognize the word thank you on a sign. We want to remember how it looks, how it sounds, and be able to actually say it. So, how do you do this? You take the flashcards and you learn a word just well enough that you can start to use it. And then you start to use it. You wake up, and when you see the mirror, you say, Kalimera, good morning. Before you go to bed, you're gonna say, Kalinichta. You're gonna be somewhat crazy. You're gonna talk to yourself walking around the house. Maybe you're gonna write down words where they're appropriate. You can write a little uh, sticky note that says tipota, nothing on it. And then you have to wander the world to find where you can stick the word nothing. This is the way to learn vocab. I want you uh, from the very beginning, this is important, <laughs> that you learn vocab and you make a habit of it. We're not overwhelming ourselves with hundreds of words a week. We're working with usually under 30 words a week. But if you learn those words, and especially if you make them active, you're gonna be speaking Greek much more quickly, much more quickly than you are probably expecting. I'm gonna end this lesson with a refrain that I want us to keep in mind. Bravo, good job, you did the lesson. And now, for our vocabulary, you are going to practice it with the flashcards. And then, step two, the most important step and the one people usually miss. You're going to possess it through use. You're going to make these words your own, just like English words are your own. Thank you for listening. Please complete the rest of the lesson and then hop into the next one whenever you're ready. Evharisto, yasu, adio.